Okay, what we're going to do in this video is do our final thoughts of Linux Mint 20, um, in particular the Cinnamon version, although some of what I talk about will be transferable across the other desktop environments that they offer. I've done a written review up here on the website that I'll also link in the description below. However, I'm going to touch on a bit more detail in this video that's not included in here. Before I get going though, I'm going to mention I do have a bit of a cough, so apologies in advance if that gets in the way of anything. But what we're going to do is start with what a user is going to be greeted with when they first boot their computer up on a fresh install, which of course will be the welcome screen. So here we have the welcome screen and I'm actually really impressed with the amount of detail and sort of effort that have been put into this welcome screen overall. So let's go into the first steps here. And I must stress how useful this is to someone who's not that used to Linux and the way it works and they're trying out this for the first time. So what we have here is the desktop colors and it gives you a choice of 11 different colors to choose from that will change certain aspects of your theme like your icons, your windows controls and also your desktop panel. So let's do a quick one first. So if we switch to blue, as you can see, it's changed the colors to those that we just mentioned and it's done it instantaneously. So there was no waiting around for it to take effect and there was no closing and reopening applications for it to take full effect on the windows that are currently open. Now I mention that because in some desktop environments you will find that changing the theme can sometimes take a bit longer and you'll also find that you might need to close an application and reopen it for it to take full effect. So the fact that that does that all in the blink, all within the blink of an eye is brilliant and something that I can really get behind. Now why that's more impressive than what I've initially realised is just how user friendly it is. So that was all done with one click. So to do that yourself without this welcome screen it would take you eight clicks. Now you might think I'm over exaggerating, but I've counted. So if we go into the application launcher, but not use the keyboard, so one click, go into themes, that's two clicks. And then as you can see, the things that are changing are the icons, the controls and the desktop, which is your panel basically. So in the icons, you'd have to click once and then click again to change it and that's the same for every single one of these that we've just mentioned. So altogether that makes eight clicks that a user would have to do to get that desired effect that we have just done with one click. Now that's really user friendly but it's made even more user friendly when you think about how confused certain new users might be. So with Linux not all desktop environments like to play ball with each other so if you get really used to one desktop environment and that's been what you've used forever, you'll be used to sort of, say if it's XFCE, your appearance package is called appearance. Say if you use KDE, your theming package is global theme. Say if you use Cinnamon, which we're on now, it's just called theme. So each desktop environment tends to have its own name for certain settings and applications. So a new user might find it a bit difficult to find a certain application for the setting that they're looking for whereas having it in the welcome screen straight away with just the one click of a button is, is very user friendly and something that shouldn't really be taken for granted and you can see how sort of much thought has gone into making that as simple as possible and I'm very supportive of that and they get top marks from me for that I think that's brilliant so moving down one is this little toggle here Again, very user friendly and you can see how much sort of thought has gone into it. So if you click that, there'll be no waiting around. As you can see, our whole desktop now has gone to the dark theme. There was no need to close and reopen anything again. And also that's even more clicks that that's now simulated. So if we do the same thing, go into themes, let's close it and reopen it. That's the one time you will have to. <clears throat> so what you can see here is everything, every one of these options has now changed apart from the mouse cursor. So that would have been 10 clicks had you have had to go through that, go through that and open it like that. So I don't think we can really sort of overstate how useful and user friendly that is. So when a new user comes to Linux from Windows and notices that, I think that does a sort of a great deal in keeping them on this platform and happy with the choice that they've made. So let's go back to the defaults now back to the green. So moving on we have this panel layout section. Now I don't remember this appearing in the beta version and if it did I've completely forgot about it. So in the stable version it's now in there and it's panel layout. So we're on the default which is of course modern. What modern is is a larger panel size 40, a bit too large for me. So we will change it and here comes my one complaint um, and you'll probably guess what it is. So we're going to go 28 
and then remember that I've changed that to 28 okay so what modern is as well is a, just a task icon only and it's all grouped so if you open up another home or Nemo sorry you'll notice it doesn't have a new entry it just opens it up under here and there'll be a number next to the icon which tells you how many windows are open of that group and then you can also just hover your mouse over each group and it will show you a sort of live preview of the windows that are active in that group at that time so if we close one and you also have your system tray here we'll mention the new improvements here now so they've had sort of a visual refresh and it's all high, um, high dpi and there's also added functionality to the mouse uh, wheel so as you can see in volume you get a little dialogue tells you what level you're at if you scroll your wheel hold on let's do it again you then get a visual representation and a little sound telling you you've changed the volume and that is all without having to go into there and in doing there and it's the same as doing it like that so now i'm going to press down on my mouse wheel and that will mute everything including me so watch there you go and we're back again so it's these little things like that that make everything a lot more user friendly and easy to use that i don't think people notice at first but very good okay so now that we've had a look at the panel on modern we're going to switch to traditional now what this is going to do is shrink the height of the panel to 27 so much smaller and it's going to ungroup everything so at the moment we have two terminals open so let's close one let's leave them both open actually so change to this one here and it will take a second because it's restarting cinnamon as you can see now it's shrunk the size and it's also ungrouped every application and given its own entry and you now have a bar layout which has the icon and the windows title next to it so if we close this home folder here we can see that the new size is now 27 which is much more my kind of size actually so let's close that now so who remembers what size i set it to if we go back to modern as you can see it doesn't remember the user's customization there so that is by design but i think it you know they've gone very far in making it as useful as possible i think maybe if they allowed you to change that and save it or something that would be a bit more user friendly but i don't really complain that is the that's by design but it's the one little niggling thing i have there with that so that's the whole welcome screen and there's also you know snapshots and update manager and again this is getting the user like a new user used to what things are called so uh, you know at first they might not know what the update manager is or software manager but it's all there and ready to go in nice ordered steps so top marks again for me for that what i'm going to do is very briefly mention the new wallpapers so i'm not too fussed about sort of the wallpapers because i always use my own but if you go into Yolana here, you'll notice a whole new selection of different wallpapers. And one of my favourites is this one here, Wave. There we go. But there is a nice selection here and they're all high resolution. So I've got no complaints there. It's good to see some new additions. So let's go back to the default. <clears throat> and we'll close that one now. So we are now on Cinnamon, which is 4.6. So if we open up a terminal here, you can see that we've already done a pol uh, cache policy of Cinnamon and it's on version 4.6 and as you can also see we are now based on ubuntu 20.04 so any of the sort of enhancements that made it onto 20.04 is now present in mint 20 as well so you benefit from that too and as you can see the new kernel is 5.4 so we're going to close that now and we're going to talk about nemo a little bit so if we open the release notes here and just search for nemo They'll explain it better than I can. So as you can see, the performance of Nemo has been improved. The new version tries to prioritize content and navigation to delay thumbnails as much as possible. And as a result, directories show up with generic icons before thumbnails are rendered, but the improvement in performance is quite noticeable. Now I can attest to that, it definitely is. So if we just show you what they mean. So in this copy of a folder here, all right, we have to do that again. Let's delete that copy and then do a new copy it's because it's already cached those uh, thumbnails so if we do it again it should show just a generic icon while it renders those image thumbnails no it's not <laughs> okay let me go on to a different folder and get something else let's go on to here uh, overlays nope let's move it <laughs> all of this just to show you something let's paste it there 
there you go so you get the generic icon while it finds the actual while it loads the image thumbnails and that will make using nemo a whole lot faster and there we go so it's nothing too crazy but it will make using nemo a whole lot faster okay so on to the one of the main features of this linux mint 20 release is of course the fractional scaling so you'll be able to scale things in a more granular way across different monitors so what i mean by that is you could have screens all from different manufacturers all with different resolutions and set their own custom fractional scaling value that's independent of the other screens that you are using so as you can see there you have a fractional scaling tab so if we go to double high dpi there and then click this button here here you can see all of the values that we could possibly do it to so you've got 75 100 25 150 173 and 200 unfortunately i don't have a very high resolution monitor at the moment that is something we're working on though so i can't really play around with it too much but it's very nice to see that there you also can of, of course change the refresh rates again independent of what monitor that you may be using so it's very nice to see that in this new version of linux mint and i'm sure a lot of people out there have been waiting for this feature you also have the automatic screen rotation there but i don't have any monitors that have that capability so we're going to talk about the default applications but only a little bit because we've done that before and it, not much has really changed of course the versions are new so you have the full office suite of lira office you have thunderbird your default email and of course firefox is your web browser now the one program we are going to talk about is of course warpinator so i really like this what this basically is is a file sharing application for computers on the same network using warpinator so if we open up our virtual machine here which is on the same network we have to power it up so as you can see i've done a few test runs with this already and i can really a test to how useful and user friendly this actually is so it shouldn't take too long and it should be automatic login so if you go back you can see that it's currently got a sort of no connection sign there but if we open it up now on this mate machine once it's initialized it should then change that to sort of connected and then you could see it in there There we go, so that's now disappeared and we can see that that computer is on that tile of virtual box. And then what we can do is let's create a new folder, a uh, file. Let's just rename this one. Right, we can click on this computer here and you get a little box here and it's a simple drag and drop. And then what will happen is you get a notification top right with accept or decline, very easy, user friendly. Let's click accept, boom, and that's done. Took no time at all. And then what you can do is see the history of transfers in this file transfer box here. And if we go to home, <coughs> it will be in this Warpinator folder here. So there's that folder that we sent, uh, just got sent. Now what we're going to do is send a file back and show you how that works on this screen. So let's just rename that again. You can see I've done this a couple of times, can't you? <laughs> right, so it's a simple drag and drop. And again, you'll get a notification saying, do you want to accept or decline? We'll click accept. And there we go, that has done. And it will be in our Warpinator folder. Now you also have some additional options in the little system tray here. So you can open save folder. If you click it again, oh, wrong one. I thought there was more options you could do there. There we go, so it's working in the mate one. So if we right click on that there, you can see Tyler and you can go to browse and then you can select something like that and then send it over like that. I'm not quite sure why it's not appearing on here at the moment. But there we go. So that's Warpinator. Um, I can't speak more highly of that. I think it's a very useful and user-friendly program to send and receive programs. No manual setups required. As long as you're on the same network, those computers will appear. Unless they're behind a firewall or something. So let's close all of that now. Let's close that one. And what I'm going to talk lastly about is, of course, the whole SnapD stuff. So if we go into the software manager and open up a terminal as well and try and install SnapD you'll notice that it won't find the package. So I'm not going to talk about the whole drama surrounding it because I'm not too fussed. I think, you know, it's Linux Mint's decision and I'll support them for it. So if we go into the one uh, package that's caused the main drama, which is Chromium, as you can see there, it's now an empty package. So clicking on that will give you a little rundown of the situation. So Chrome browser is no longer available as a package in the repository, only as a snap. 
Mint does not support Snap and will not let packages install Snap behind your back. This is an empty package and can be safely removed. So you can re-enable SnapD if you want, but by default there will be no SnapD and installing this package won't do anything really. So as you can see, it'll ask you for the password and then once this is installed, it won't appear anywhere because there is no apt package for Snap in that repo. So if you type in Chrome, it won't be there. So you can safely remove that and not worry about that. However, I prefer Flatpaks and Flathub repository is enabled by default. So you can see we've already installed Caden Live to edit this video and that is from Flathub there. So if you want to sort of hear a bit more of a talk about the SnapD drama, I'll link my podcast in the description below where that was a topic that we spoke about. So my final thoughts on Linux Mint then. Actually, I think it's one of the better releases I've seen this year and it's one of the most user-friendly distros I've used in a very, very long time. If you're a new user and you're coming from Windows, you should feel at home instantly, really. It shouldn't take you too long to find your way around. But that doesn't just mean it's only for new users. I think there's something there for everyone. Whether you're seasoned or slightly more advanced, I think you can use Linux Mint and be quite happy with your choice. Um, so that's basically it. I'm sorry about my cough. I've tried to sort of suppress it as much as I can. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.